Hi, welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we went out to a machine that had uh, a check engine light on. The operator called, and so we went out there, and it ended up being the turbo actuator. And this is a newer machine, so it was a VGT actuator, and that's the electric motor actuator on top that's got the board in it and the gear in it, and it drives the rack on the VGT turbo to move the VGT open or closed. And that's how the engine controls exhaust gas pressure. And that actuator is there mainly, mainly because of the engine having EGR, because you have to be able to control exhaust gas pressure versus boost pressure to flow EGR. So we go out and the actuator that's on the engine has failed. And so we go back in and we go to order an actuator and we have to go to a TSB bulletin and there's some updates and we end up having to call because the part number has been changed a couple times and the newest part number is not on parts.comas.com yet. So we uh, get the actuator and they drive out to the job and they put it on the machine and it has an active fault. So the active fault is that the uh, software in the actuator is not compatible with the ECM calibration. So uh, we ended up, long story short, we ended up calling technical help and they told us to get another actuator. And we drove back out to the job and put it on and calibrated it. And we ended up with the same active fault. So this is why we had the fault and this is what we did to fix it. And this is rare, it's unusual. You'll probably never run across it, but if you ever do, um, it saved our bacon. <laughs> so uh, we got the machine back up. We didn't have to go order another part and hope it, hope it was right. Here's what happened. So our problem right here is 4956. It's driving a red light and the turbo actuator software is out of calibration. And this is in the... Um, Cummins Recon actuator we just installed out of the box. It looks like a brand new actuator, actually. It doesn't look like it's rebuilt. Anyway, the casting looks brand new. So the first thing we do is go up to number one at the top. That's the ECM calibration. Notice the double zeros to the right of the period. That means that it is the first production calibration. So I go to the revision list and take a look and see if there's a revision that fixes the problem, but I doubt there's going to be. And I doubt that because it was running fine with the other actuator that failed. This is a 24 volt machine, not 12. So the ECM calibration is a 24 volt calibration. It expects to see 24 volts of battery voltage and it expects um, the VGT to be uh, showing that it's receiving 24 volts to it. So uh, let's move on to our next slide. So now we've got Cummins Insight hooked up and this module is what you see when you click on advanced ECM information in the left view bar in Insight. If you remember the view bars got connected at the top and then fault codes and it goes on down. There's a section that says advanced ECM information and on this particular engine at the bottom of the advanced ECM information list is turbocharger actuator compatibility. Now, here's the reason 4956 was active. It's because the turbocharger had the wrong firmware in it. So if you look under name there, it says turbocharger actuator application identification and the red block around 3144. Well, that block up there is what's inside the VGT. That's what the VGT is reporting to the ECM the, it, that's its software revision, kind of like Insight up in the top left corner tells you what revision or version it is. That's what this is telling you. This is the software that's in me. But on the bottom, where it says turbocharger actuator calibration lift, I've got a green block around 0003174. That is what the ECM will accept in the actuator. So because we've actually got 3144 in the actuator and the ECM wants the other number, we've got an active fault. 
And here is a quick look at the uh, fault description. VGT software does not match the application that the VGT is installed in. And I've got a uh, orange block around the VGT actuator because the problem is in there. And the only way we're going to fix it is changing the software in there or replacing it and getting one that has the correct software in it. And uh, what we think happened is that these actuators, they've been changing part numbers and superseding things. And we think that they maybe had some boards uh, get into these that had the wrong firmware installed into them. So uh, that's what we thought was going on. So what are we going to do to fix this? Well, uh, I'm not going to go in today on how to use Insight and calibrate with it. I'm just going to show you what we did. Uh, this, what you're seeing on the screen now, is a section of Insight in the calibration module that's called the PDD or Programmable Data Link Devices. So anything that's on a data link that is programmable will show up in here. On the high horsepower big engines that are thousands of horsepower, you can calibrate uh, electric fuel pumps with different calibrations. There's many different devices that you can calibrate. When you get down to the mid-range and even the heavy duty, which is the ISX and the mid-range is the B, we're working on a B67 here. It's a B67 uh, 136C, so that's a construction engine. It's off-road. It's in a, in a crane. And so the numbers on the left, all those numbers you see, are part numbers of turbo actuators. So we are looking for, through this list, to find our part number. Unfortunately, our part number is not in this list because they've been changing and superseding numbers faster they can, than they can update this database because this happens in two completely different places. Uh, but, so what we, this is what we did. We took the original actuator part number and there was two supersessions that we could see the numbers to, and then a call to the factory with the number that was current released production that we could actually order and install. So we took a chance, we dropped back one, one super session number to 545-2655, and sure enough, up there, number the line number two, which was a good calibration, it was EI10270.00, and that's 24 volt counterclockwise. And on the right, application ID is 3174. Now you see all the different application IDs up there? We need a 3174. So we're connected to the engine, same data link you used to, to, to work on the engine, except we come down to this screen and we right click that calibration and choose transfer to device. And in about a minute, it was done. And then here's what we saw. We calibrated, we reconnected to the machine. We noticed the fault was inactive. We went back to advanced ECM information. We highlighted turbocharger actuator compatibility on the bottom of the list at the left. This screen opened and under monitors, turbocharger actuator actuator application identification was 3174 and on the bottom we needed 3174. Now you notice it says on top turbocharger actuator voltage is 12 volts. Don't really care. I think that what happened is that field just wasn't updated. Remember on a computer the software has to do it has to tell every field every character to be updated. I think that got missed and that's why it didn't go to 24 volt. What did matter is it had the right firmware in it to run the actuator correctly and the rotation was counterclockwise and that's what we needed. So we cleared all the faults. We ran a stationary regen on a machine. Everything looked good. We did, uh, we traveled the machine that makes the engine really work. No faults and we were good to go. Well, this is rare. Uh, I've only ever had to calibrate, I think, two actuators, this and one other one back in 2013 uh, when they came out with the 13 engine. They had some in the field, I think, that they, we program, had to reprogram. Back then, the software was clunky. It took a half an hour, and 
sometimes it failed and then you couldn't reconnect and but now it, it worked like a charm so you'll probably never have to do this the main point of this video is if you got that fault code where there's software mismatch or the wrong software you knew where to go look in insight to make sure that those numbers match and if they don't um, you need to make a phone call to your to, to your Cummins help because uh, we already knew we had the right physical part on there we just knew that it had the wrong uh, software in it because we kn we knew about that mismatch so thanks for joining me subscribe uh, give it a thumbs up if you like the video and we'll see you next time on Engine Shop Joe.